I guess thanks to uh, to Jared and the team for the invite uh, and the opportunity to present today. Um, as Jared said, there's a, there's a bit of technology in here, but I, I want to kind of walk through the concepts because I see the opportunity using energy um, and there's certainly a lot of people using energy to transform the way they do, they do maintenance, um, particularly with the advent of AI. Um, so I want to talk through some of those concepts. Um, obviously, with uh, with maintenance, we're seeing this evolution um, that's going on. Uh, we're seeing sort of transformation of the existing thinking. Um, new technologies create new opportunities, and those opportunities, um, you know, obviously can improve the way you manage and maintain your business, um, but also improve your energy efficiency at the same time and productivity. We'll use some case studies, and if there's questions, quickly. But I, I don't think we have the opportunity to do that. I guess. Many of you would have seen this slide on, on LinkedIn. It's really about this, you know, Second World War, the, the planes were coming back from Nazi Germany. Um, they're doing analysis and sort of seeing where the red dots were. And they thought, well, that's probably where they reinforced the planes. But in reality, what was happening is the planes that weren't returning where the red dots weren't. Um, I guess the point of that is that the data you can't see is often more important than what you can. And I think through energy, we're able to light up um, sort of new sources of data and that that data can create an entirely different picture. And I want to sort of share some examples of that. Um, uh, this is from this source from Road to Reliability, but it's sort of failure patterns that happen in maintenance. And as maintenance professionals, um, a lot of people would have seen these before, um, but there's a sort of general premise that um, a lot of failures happen due to random activities. You know, there's, there's sort of a randomness in in why things fail. Um, when you start to introduce the energy uh, metrics, you can actually see things where you wouldn't normally see. And I'm going to go show 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 you through some graphs and material that kind of highlights that. Um, traditional techniques like vibration and thermography, um, you know, have been used for 20, 30, 50 years. Um, using energy as a new dimension um, really throws uh, that thinking upside down. With the advent of all this data and with the advances that are happening in AI and the AI space, and, you know, this, this is really advanced. Um, you know, more so in the sort of last five to 10 years, um, anyone that's sort of seen the press and, and has used chat GPT, chat GPT will be amazed. Um, but that's, I guess that's the, the front end of, of AI, but there's a, there's a world of um, uh, advances going on behind the scenes. So injecting energy data in there is just another opportunity um, to, to leverage that kind of power and that kind of technology. So um I guess if we look back at the way, um, you know, sort of maintenance has been thought of, um, we, we can kind of rethink that with the energy lens. I wanted to go go back to some, some basics here. Generally, a machine, when it starts off, uh, has this sort of early phase where it, it, you know, can fail more often and not. It's kind of a wear-in period, if you like. Through the the life cycle of of the um, the asset of the machine, um, there's these random failures that I just talked about, um, and I'm going to describe why that actually occurs. And then we get this sort of end of life where it's worn out. You know, it's done its time. Um, but what we're looking to do is actually improve on those random events that are random, uh, as per the plan example, because there's a new data set or a data set we couldn't see, um, and we're looking to try and introduce that. In that, you know, sort of life between the, you know, the early introduction and, and the wear out phase, um, these random failures are generally, uh, when, when you look at the science and the research behind it, uh, one of the biggest contributors are operator loads, um, you know, miss, it might be a training uh, opportunity there or maintenance practices, and you can see the, the list there. And what we're trying to do is actually use the energy dimension to get some insights into why those are happening and using that data to, you know, take that back to the teams, take that back to your contractors and saying, hey, you know, are we maintaining these correctly? Are we operating these correctly? Can we improve on the work we do? Um, so this is this is why this energy dimension is so important. Really trying to cut down that uncertainty um, and make you know maintenance actually not just pre um, predictive, but you know sort of prescriptive. We know what's going on well ahead of of what where it is. Uh, 
for those who have been in the maintenance game, this is this is called a PF curve um, and, and really kind of maps out the typical ways in which a machine would fail. Um, and this is a generic view. It's not specific to any individual view, any individual machine or any individual failure pattern. Um, so you can just sort of see that these different uh, behaviors that are exhibited across um, a, a typical failure of the machine. Uh, and you can obviously see that the cost of those increases. The further you go down that curve, the more expensive it gets. That's the, that's the known science. I'm just going to add another dimension to that. So the dimension is um, when you move down the curve, they traditionally can be picked up by humans. Um, you know, I've got a bit of industrial deafness in my right ear. Um, I can hear it and feel it. Um, if it's very noisy, if it's very loud, the particular machine, but when you're trying to service it, uh, you know, early on before the obvious signs are showing, then you need instrumentation. Uh, and the higher the precision, the instrumentation, the more detail you can get, but you need some kind of way to analyze it. And that's where AI comes in, you know, capturing that data really early. And what we see up the top here is you actually see changes in energy. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, a machine will actually draw more power depending on if there's friction in the system that, that's exhibited as heat, uh, that's exhibited as noise. Um, it will draw more power to kind of compensate for the friction or the resistance in the system. So what we're trying to do is actually measure that energy and, and determine what's actually changed or, you know, uh, effectively determine root cause. It might be operational change. It might be a slipping belt, might be a worn uh, bearing. Uh, you know, there's different ways in which the machine will obviously fail through operator or, or maintenance interjection. Um, later on the stage, you'll see the traditional sort of noise, heat, smoke. You know, if it's at that point, we're in desperate times. This is, the, this is not the end of the curve you want to be at. You know, clearly want to be at the front end. Um, so what we're trying to do is measure these sort of precursors, voltage and current particularly. Um, obviously, that creates a, not only a, an opportunity to get it early, but it also creates an economic value. There's value in saving money. Um, I guess some of the quick outcomes, um, conscious of time, about halfway through. So I guess this is an example of um, one of my businesses, this is Movis, um, and this is actually predicting the failure of an air conditioning unit or HVAC unit. Um, you can clearly see cold night um, starts, um, this AI is detecting it, and all of that friction, all that resistance in the system is actually drawing more and more energy you can see quite clearly in this case it's vibration and temperature but that throws off as more energy once it's resolved we're back to normal um, but trying to process all of that data without an ai without a, a sort of a back-end uh, technology is really quite difficult um, typically in the in the daytime we're getting very um, you know not 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 too much to talk about but it's at night time in this particular example where humans aren't traditionally there in this in this case with the customer so this concept of 24 by 7 monitoring continually looking at uh, different states of the machine um, doesn't require necessarily having a human there all the time uh, here's some just other examples. Everyone's been to a supermarket and seen one of these, and this is not really a typical example of what you would want to monitor, you know, typically in industrial or commercial applications. Um, you know, we wouldn't go to sort of go down to this level, but I want to use this as a good case study. So um, what we can now do through the energy signature is pick up the operational states or in, you know, if you're a manufacturer, manufacturing states, each machine will have its own state and pattern. Each of those patterns has a, a, a fingerprint or thumbprint that the energy signature can be picked up and detected. And we might even get unknown states. So these states can really inform the operations. It might be stuck in a particular state and no one wants burnt chook, um, particularly on a Friday afternoon, I'm sure. Um, so using this sort of technology, analyzing energy signature, using AI to, to automatically detect those creates a feedback loop for operations and maintenance. And obviously different running conditions. You want to know that it's not running when it shouldn't be. Um, you want to make sure that you're not paying extra uh, for when you haven't even got a, uh, a business operating. So that energy signature is really operating at a, the, uh, a level above the metering. We're in monitoring and then we're sort of optimizing maintenance and production. So that's really a new way in which it's used. We can go down to the next level. Um, this is this is AI sort of automatically detecting states of these different machines as we talked about. Um, and 
there's there's periods in which it might be transitioning between a state that might be a defrost it might be heading into a defrost uh, cycle if you're a fridge for example it might be stuck somewhere in that state um, that's you know you really want clean running behavior of machineries and obviously you start to get these clustering effect where you, the sort of ai and energy is really throwing off different uh, aberrations or anomalies if you're trying to manage a fleet and i've tried to simple the uh, sort of simplify the, the technology down but here's a great example you've got 40 hvac machines you can clearly see there's a couple, um, and this is, I guess, power average over apparent uh, temperature. We can see that there's several machines that are using far more than they should. Um, so this is an effective way to, to optimize, um, you know, short staff uh, to, to prioritize where your efforts need to be. And, and it's just using the energy data as, as a way to do that. Um, obviously, life cycle is a really difficult thing because you've got maintenance and you've got operation between. Are we extending or, in, or improving the life cycle of the machine? That's effectively what we want to know from the maintenance activity. Um, if you start to compare, uh, you know, the, the energy signatures over time, you can see, clearly see in both of these examples, uh, you know, with the blue one's the new aircon, the, the red one's the old. We can kind of see that this life cycle is really changing um, and that, really great for asset planning, uh, refresh cycles, uh, asset planning cycles. And you can get an opportunity obviously to benchmark where your assets are within the life cycle. Obviously, once you start to fix faults, uh, those faults in inadvertently actually drawing more power and they might be faults that you can't see yet. It might be not operating in a faulty manner, but it might be operating in a degraded manner, a manner that wasn't at its peak. Um, you can clearly see examples of this. This is power. It's just tracking normally. Um, as soon as that's replaced, you can see exactly what's going on. It drops the power straight away. Um, and not just maintenance failures. We're also talking about operational states, you know, refri low refrigerant, um, because we've got different levels of that. You know, the gas levels are not quite up. So that, again, that's another fee way to feed back into the operational states and, and making sure that, um, you know, maintainers and operators are getting up-to-date information just by adding that energy lens into the equation. Um, here's just another example, a block filter. Uh, obviously that happens you know more than it should um, using this data using the energy data there's more resistance in the system when you add energy into the equation and that creates uh, I guess another opportunity to to feed that back into your teams um, that was a really quick uh, kind of run through conscious um, we've got a few presenters today but I want to kind of share a few examples uh, give you a, a view on you know, how maintenance is transforming, how the, the, um, the opportunity that energy presents and, and AI and the technology elements of it. Um, Jared, if can do quickly if questions are there, but otherwise I'll, I'll pass back to you. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks.